what the hardest thing is about being old? For me, it's memory. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I used to have a very good memory, but in recent years, I can sometimes I can barely remember her name. But, but the memory is the biggest loss that I've uh, sort of has upset me most. I think. Right. Apart from the obvious, you know, what you where you walk and how you walk and right. a few other practical things. But, uh, as a basic, uh, that would be the worst one for me. And so is that memory from a long time ago as well? Or just... Oh yeah. Okay. Well, I used to pride myself on my memory. Mm. So what? what... Yeah, now it's disappeared. Okay. And what was your work before you retired? Um, oh, how do I put it? The last 25 years was sharpening things. Okay. I used to go around and sharpen knives, chisels, you name it, Scissors. all sorts of odd peculiar things. Some I would sharpen on spot, others I'd have to bring back to the work and uh, use the machinery to sharpen. Okay. Did that for about 25 years. Right. I think I counted up once and I had something like 53 or 55 customers. So it was a sort of a once every three weeks I'd travel yeah. around yeah. and uh, did the hut, Tony, Upper Hut, Johnsonville, uh, a bit further out from Johnsonville as well. But I stayed clear of Wellington because it's a perishing place to drive yeah. through. Because yeah, people used to get their scissors sharpened, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, I can remember that. Scissors, you name it. But, um, no, Wellington I stayed clear of, you could never find parking, and uh, it was such a long distance between yeah. everybody there, so no, I had yeah. enough, uh, Stayed away. enough customers by going up the gorge and right. doing Johnsonville and further right. out. Yeah. Right, right. But, uh, no, a long time doing that. So, as you, when you got older and you had to come into residential care, can you tell us a little bit about how you came to be here? Well, my wife died about, uh, oh, it's got to be getting, getting close to two years now. And uh, it was just the two of us at that point. And I didn't want to inflict myself on any of the kids. I know what it's like. I grew up with the, my grandfather living there okay. and that was a right real pain. Yeah and not the sort of thing I wanted to inflict on anybody else, so, so I came here. Right. And uh, they come and visit me. Right. And that's all that matters, really. Right. They keep in touch. They're not bad like that. So uh, I don't cause anybody any pain. <laughs> and so what's the most difficult thing about living in residential care? At the moment, my most difficult thing is that the flipping <clears throat> police department took away my driving licence. Right. So I am completely stuffed in terms of being able to drive around and do what I want to do. Right. Um, I've had a couple of goes to try to get it back, right. and I'll keep trying it yet. Right. Because. Uh, you can imagine living in a place like this with no wheels. Yeah. You either buy a push bike or a scooter or something. Yeah. But uh, no, they're not really enthusiastic about you running around in scooters or bring them in here to park them. So um. <clears throat> I've made a few gentle inquiries on that one. Yeah. Got sort of, whoops, shut down a bit. Yeah. So that was frustrating for you to... Well it was, it was when I lost my, my licence and I still don't quite know why I lost it. Somebody complained about, oh, something I was treating as some of the grandchildren like driving lessons. And I think it would probably make too much of a, a thing of it because it was a complaint and next thing, wham, bam, oops. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to be doing that. 
Hmm. So I've had one two goes of getting it back, but I'll keep trying. Good for you. And a little bit of luck, I might be able to buy a car again. But, yeah. So do you miss going out in the car? I, I miss it entirely. You know, I've got no freedom. Uh, I don't fancy, you know, I could buy a motorbikey thing or a scooter and trot around it, but I don't fancy that either. I've only got to shake me once or twice and fall over and Hello, good night, nurse. Um, yeah. So I've never, never owned one, never driven one, so it's a whole new learning curve which I'm just not prepared to uh, to tackle. And do you go out in the van when they have oh, yes. the drive? Yep. <clears throat> Is that good? Oh yeah, enjoy I enjoy that. that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're, they're all familiar places, but yeah. it's just yeah. Yeah. getting out of them here. Yeah. I mean, I can get out of here with the kids too. Yeah. If I want to go somewhere, I just ring somebody yeah. and uh, they have an argument between themselves over whose turn it isn't. But, Are they fighting over you? Uh, I don't know if it's <coughs> over me or, or not happy. One of the two, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I let them sort it out. Right. So, uh, yeah. But it's, 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 it's never much more than a a morning shopping in the hut or something. Right, right. I don't sort of take drives for the sake of taking drives anymore. So we talked about the challenges, so what uh, what would you say uh, gives your life meaning every day? <coughs> the biggest meaning I think I've got is the family. I mean we had a 11 children, 10 of whom live locally, so uh, they keep calling in, so that's good. And I go out, they'll drag me out for dinner or tea or something. So the family is actually a, a good family. Right. It's there. If I want something, one phone call. Yeah. And the job's done. Yeah. Other than that, they'll come and say, oh, I want to go for a drive. Oh, it's raining out there. No, thank you, not today. Well, if it's fine here, where are we going? Wherever you like. Oh, well, take a drive around Pet One, you know. Yeah. <laughs> or even Eastbourne, you know. I don't right. care. Somewhere where I can get out and shop somewhere. Not that I ever want to buy much. But no. Uh, take the opportunity when it's there. So do you, do you sort of manage to keep positive? I hope so. Sounds like you do. Well, I'm used to it now. You know, it's, yeah. Um, it was a bit of a pain, particularly when the wife died. But uh, when all of a sudden I was on my own. Yeah. And uh, it took a while to sort of get the head back straight on where I was now. And, uh, yeah. I've got there and now it's just a, every day and if I stay here all day, what the hell, if I get a chance to go out, I'll go out. Mm. But um, I've got used to all that now. So, no so can you give us any advice, nurses and caregivers, um, what, what advice would you like to, to give um, people who are caring for older people in residential care? The biggest one, and they're not bad at it here, is they pop in and see you occasionally during the day. Yeah. So you know you're not stranded in, in your room or something. Okay, you can ring the bell if you have a problem, but there'll always be a head popping around the door. Yeah. And that, to me, is, uh, is one of the big things. You're not on your pattern alone. They know you're here and they just, whoops, you're all right, yeah, good. Yeah. And uh, a cup of tea comes in and it's all good. So just that little bit of... Contact. Yeah, yeah that's, that's all you good. need. That's good advice. Hmm. Well, no, that's really... I get quite a bit of contact from my family. Right. 
Then I mean, there's an awful lot of them don't want to no, no. see nobody. No. And they would need somebody poking their head round the door a couple of times a day to mm. just let them know they're not on their mm. family alone. Mm. And would you have any advice as well for people who are, are going moving into care? No, I think the hardest thing is it's the accepting the change. That you're not your own boss anymore for a starter. Um, it is a different life. And it depends a lot on how much of a family you've got, how many mm. visitors yet. If you if you're sort of in a situation that I'm not, thank God, where you, You've got nobody else. I would hate to be in that situation. But I don't doubt that there are a lot of people who mm. are. Then I think the answer is so long as the people where they're staying pop in yeah. at intervals yeah. and even drag them out to sort of, oh, I know, they didn't. We're having a sing song. And I don't sing, but you know, you get dragged out, so you go along. But um, that sort of thing keeps your uh, your mind happy, yeah. really. Yeah. You're not sitting here on your patting alone. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how I'm going to get on without TV these days. <laughs> <laughs> it's a life that really is. Even if you never watch it, just to have it yeah. Yeah. going there. Yeah. Um, it's company. Yeah. So, um, that's the main thing, really. Don't turn it off. Leave it on. And it's, there's always that little bit of something or other coming through. And mm. sometimes you stop and watch, and other times you don't. Mm. But um, it takes away that feeling of being on your pet my own. I've never nice. heard that expression before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pat Malone. I remember that. Yes. <laughs> who was Pat Malone? <laughs> no, Do you know who no. Pat Malone was? They were on their own. <laughs> they were on their own. Yeah, it's, it's an Irish one from. It's an yeah. Irish yeah. one. Yeah. From way, way, way back. Yeah. On your Pat Malone. It's just yeah. on your on your own. So you encourage people to have a lot of children then, because it helps. Well, I, I, I think it does. Amazing. The one thing we tried to do, and I think we succeeded, was to create a family. Not just her and me and umpteen dozen kids who bugger off. Because um, we had 11. But um, no, never more than 10 at home at any one time. But uh, we tried to keep the group, the, uh, keep the family as a family. That's, that's really interesting, isn't it? Like create a, not just have children, but actually create a family. Well, create a family. Well, then, if you do it properly, and I think we have, I never have a shortage of visitors. Mm. And I know there's people in here who probably never see anybody other than mm. the staff from one year's end to the next. Mm. Are they all still local, your children? Uh, there's one in Australia. And the rest uh, are local, yeah. Mm. That is unusual. It probably is. Yes, isn't it? But, uh, yeah. Well, we tried to raise a family, not 11 children. And family is where it all starts. And that, to me, is the main. Was my and Jeannie, my wife's main objective was we wanted a family, we wanted everybody to stick together. If you had a problem, everybody turned up to sort it out. If you had a, an evening, everybody turned up. And all their offsiders as well. So we tried to keep the family as a, as a total family and I think we succeeded. Mm. Is that them in that photograph behind? Good one. Oh, Beautiful. Yeah, there's a few of them there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Did one. you come from a big family? No, I was one of three. My wife was one of... How many did she have? I think there were five girls and three boys. 
when I was quite big. Yeah. But there was two families because your mother had married twice. And right. So, but even so, they still worked as a family. But mm. um, <coughs> no, we tried to keep a family as a family, always, because that's what it's all about. Right. You're not individuals. And it worked so far. I have no trouble getting visitors to just pop in. Otherwise, I think I'd, I'd be sitting here on my own screaming out the window. <laughs> so, and you've got an oxygen, a concentrator there. Yeah, I occasionally have problems breathing. Well, yeah, I was going to say, because you haven't mentioned that you've... <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, do, do you feel hampered by your chest problems? By not physical? really. It's too many years of smoking, so it's my own fault. I don't smoke anywhere near as much as I used to. I still smoke, but instead of 20 or 30 a day, I'd probably be lucky to get have three or four a day. But um, just enough so that you know, yeah, I can still have a cigarette. You know. Yeah. But. Um, so that's what that's for. Right. It hasn't been turned on for a long time. Mm. So uh, I think I'm winning a bit. Right. Touch wood. It's great, Nigel. Thank you. It's a right pleasure of mine. It wasn't too difficult, <laughs> was it?